Hi everybody, I'm back from more Pilates Express. This time with the spine corrector. Love this piece of equipment. I know not everybody has it, but it's one of the uh, cheapest props you can get in Pilates and really good a full body workout. This one is from Balanced Body and it's very portable, it's very light. Um, it's not always uh, the softest thing in the world because it is portable, but you could always put a, a yoga mat or something underneath it. Okay, so it has two features. This is called the lip. This is called the barrel. And uh, we're going to start out by sitting up in the lip. And we're going to be working on our C-curve, right? So what is a C-curve? It's trying to keep the body in the shape of a capital C and work the body um, using the deep core muscles. So my feet are parallel. I'm going to sit up tall, inhale, and I'm going to exhale, scoop into my navel, roll back until I'm just kind of right in my waistband, inhale there, and exhale, scoop, scoop, scoop. You get such great contact feedback, I think, from the spine corrector. And you don't have to go super far back, but you literally feel that your abs are helping you pull off of that spine corrector, keeping separation between your hip flexors and your low abs. I'm drawing it back. Now, you can put your hands behind your head and start to go progressively lower. Not everybody has the upper back extension to allow this, but start feeling that you could unwind a little bit more and more. I'll give you some options for how you could come over to in extension, which is one of the best things you can do on this piece of equipment. I keep one of these in my living room. I love it so much because at the end of a day when I have felt really tight in my shoulders, this feels so great. Okay, so you could have a pillow here. You could have something that slightly supports you here. I'm going to just take my arms back and stretch. Now I'm kind of uh, hitting the wall here, but you would want to go equally out. Maybe I'll scoot that over just a little bit. Give me some more space. Yeah, and down, around, and up. And I get such great stretch across the front of my pecs and my lats, inhaling and exhaling. And then I can just support my head, pulling abs up and in, and coming back. Now, what could you do if you're just not that open? Well, you can move this down, and you can lay back over and have a little bit more gradual stretch here. This feels great too. Again, you may want a pillow there. You could work different arm movements here. This is what we call monkey arms. Always want to think about this as connected to your breath and your abs so that you're getting something deep into your core with every movement, right? I could just take my arms up here, interlace and stretch. If you felt any tension in your low back, you could put something, a little pillow or something under there, but that keeps it in line for a lot of people who may not yet have the opening. Okay, so I'm gonna take it back and now we're gonna work on some sideline work here. Love this, just to get the body into axial elongation, right? So you can come into what we call a Z-sit. You can see the shape of that's in my body. Some people are very tight here in the side hip into their tensor fascia here. So if that's true, just stretch that leg out. You may feel that that allows you to open. And I'm just going to use my bottom hand like a rudder. I'm going to reach over, just grab my top wrist, stretch. It feels truly electric in your body. It's so good. As I come back up, I'm just going to let my hand glide around that, stretch up and over nice counter stretch. This time as I go down, I'm going to make my obliques and lats work a little harder. I'm going to try to control my descent and I might just circle my arm this time. Inhale and exhale and I'm pressing down into the big toe side of my lengthened leg here and that's going to keep me opening the side waist and then I'm going to circle. Pulling my abs in, using that with breath Again, coming back up, nice counter stretch. This time, again, I'm gonna go out and control it. Now I'm gonna add a little rotation from my trunk. I can just keep my head back there. And I really wanna do this in my trunk, not my hips. So I'm trying to stabilize there. I don't always do a great job with that, but I'm really wanting to 
I'm going to spiral my rib cage around my spine and then bring myself back up. So great. So let's repeat it on the other side. So I'll just do a, an adjustment here. Coming out. Again, here's your long leg if you need it. Let's bring it out. First time down, I'm going to give myself as much assistance as I need. Resting my head, reaching, taking hold of my top wrist. Turn your palm to face the sky. It's going to give you a nice external rotation in your shoulder, I mean in your humerus, your main arm bone, and that'll probably feel the best to you. This leg can go long, so you really feel like you're stretched another inch taller in your spine. And then draw yourself back up. Nice counter stretch. You can hold here as well. This time as I go down, sure, I'm going to control that. Bring it over, and I might just circle. So the movements in our body, you know, you have fluids in your body called synovial fluid. And as we age, the volume of that decreases. So it's important that we get it going every day so it doesn't feel so sluggish. And as you sleep, your body also starts to suck it into the joints and the bones. So these kind of exercises are just really necessary for not letting you feel like your body's made of concrete. Get the movement, get the fluids flowing. Your whole body will feel better as a result of that. I'm coming back up. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my legs over the front. This is considered um, a more challenging way to do hundreds and different things. I actually think it's a little easier for a lot of people, including me, because I don't tend to tense my hip flexors as much. So give this a try. You could also do it from the other direction. So I'm gonna go back into my C curve here. Now, hundreds, we wanna be pumping the arms vigorously 10 sets, and on the fifth breath you exhale, draw your low belly in. So I inhale, pump, and exhale, <sighs> tightening my core, trying not to use my hip flexors to do the work. The movements are strong in your arms, like you're pumping a ball underneath. Try not to have weenie wrists or anything. There are not a lot of movement in your upper body. Precise, I think that's about 52, three, four, five, and exhale. I'm never quite great on the count, so I'm gonna do, do as many as you think is appropriate, and exhale. We'll call it 80, two, three, four, five, exhale. Stay strong, two, three, four, five, exhale. Pull your abs in, ugh, and give yourself a little help. It's also a great place to practice teaser, right? You get this support here. You're kind of scooped in that position. So come away from the teaser because this efforts to get up to the thighs is really where you build that core strength. I love the way this helps you know how small these movements should be. Yeah, they're great. You're not gonna go too far on this. It's a wonderful way to recruit. Okay, now let's do a little bit of inverted work. So, as you come down from this, you want to make sure you don't perplunk. And there's a couple of things that are really important as you come overhead. Don't do this if you're pregnant or if you have uh, a lot of low back pain or if you have uh, anything like spondylolisthesis or something where it's contraindicated to extend in your lumbar spine. If you're okay and you can just kind of use your body to gently slide down, here, I'm going to make sure that I've got my low back connected throughout this exercise. That's vital. So I'm going to pull on these little grooves in here. And now I'm going to start out with my legs in tabletop, pulling my abs in like mad. My heels are together. And I'm going to exhale, press out as I tone my core. I want to make sure that I'm on my shoulders, not my neck. Keep nice long lines and try to really work the resistance in your body and not just straighten your legs. We'll try two more. Exhale, deep core, reaching out with heels drawing straight down from the belly button. From here, I'm gonna go parallel now. I'm gonna bring my legs in opposition. Feels so great. Inhale as they meet together. Exhale, here's my scissor. Now, don't let your pelvis go dancing all over the place, right? You want to make sure that as you meet into the center, 
you're holding that core strong. And you could go a little faster, pulse, pulse, switch, pulse, pulse. <sighs> Feels great on here. You get such support. Now we're going to go into helicopter. This is a little challenge, but just try to follow my directions with this, okay? So your right leg goes down and you bring it up, switch, now your left leg goes down. Now, both legs circle out, and now your left leg is ready to go down. Your right leg, circle out, there's your right leg again. So it's really fun when you start to figure out the pattern of this. And circle around, down, and wide. I'm just constricted a little bit because of the wall, and then coming back, really fun, okay. Now, let's start to go into bicycle. So, I really want to drag my heel along the lip so that I'm getting this full revolution in my hips while tightening my core. Still pulling my low back to connect to the spine corrector to make sure that I'm not arching or hurting myself. Now, I reverse it. I'm going to press out, squeeze myself into the spine corrector and fully elongate my legs. I'll do one more and bring it back. Now I'm going to gently slide myself out of there and I'm going to press my feet on the top of this, set myself up into a nice right angle with a neutral spine and here's some bridging. I use my feet sort of like prehensile feet and to connect that and not slide around. Because your hips are elevated here, this is harder on your hamstrings. So you may want to let your range be a little small. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, draw your abs in. Start to peel your body off sequentially, like a drawbridge coming up. You want to be, again, just at the shoulder blades, not on your neck and shoulders, I mean, not on your neck. Inhale at the top, and then exhale, reverse that, using your abdominals like a thread that sort of pulls your abs and your spine all the way down. I inhale at the bottom. Exhale, start with a deep core connection, peeling off, lifting the tailbone. Almost all of us have a place in the spine or places where we tend to brick. And that means that the vertebral bodies were sort of jammed together. We really want to feel supple in the spine. So if you notice an area that's sort of plopping down, and like a wide waistband or something, then spend a little bit more time there, a little bit more breath there. Now, from here, if you can able to keep your hips up there, you could drop your butt an inch and pull your abs and your glutes up. This is great effective work for your butt. But don't dip down so far or, you know, pulse up so quickly that you cause any strain in your low back. This is very precise, it's very hard, I really like it a lot. And then slowly, slowly roll that down. Ah, yeah, yeah. You really feel that in the back of your hip. Okay. So, a few other things that make a, for a really good exercise work on to um, the spine corrector is extension. All right. So, I'm going to flip this around. Again, we've got the lip and the barrel. And I have found out from a lot of practice over the years that for me, what works really effectively to help me stabilize and recruit well is to have my kneecaps about at the hump of the lip over there. All right, now with all extension, we wanna press the pelvis down the belly up so that we're not arching into the low back. First thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of swan. So my feet are flexed. I'm gonna pull my abs up and in. I'm just gonna hover off the mat trying to work my back extensors. But I'm feeling really fluid here. If I pull my abs up and in, I can start to feel almost like my spine is made of seaweed or linguine or something. It's nice and supple, that feels awesome. From here, I'm gonna work toward spinal balance. I'm going to take my right arm and my left leg and work them oppositionally. Still again, centered in my core so that I'm not arching my back. I could point. It's important for balance. Now, here's where we're going with this. And you may need to adjust this. I know when I used to practice this years ago, I thought, you could never do this, but you can. 
swimming. Okay, so here I'm hovering. Both legs and arms are reaching out. And without lowering, I'm lifting, I'm inhale. Still pulling my abs up and in. Trying to feel the weight of the upper body and the lower body work in tandem so that I don't come on my noodle or drop back the other way. But it's really not that far down. As I finish that up, I'm going to just kind of sit into a wide leg child's pose. Rest over here. It feels awesome. So let's end with just a little bit of arm work. So this is a um, different way you can do triceps. Some people like their hands here. I like my fingertips facing in. Now you could totally keep your butt on this and that's a little bit more secure. If you wanna work a little bit more intensely, you can lift your butt up and you're just gonna dip and down. So my abs are working every time I narrow my elbows and press back up. We'll just do about eight. Mm. And one more, I'm bringing it up. Love those, you could do multiple sets. So fun, very effective. Okay, but we wanna start or end with something pretty spectacular. And that is a balanced plank core. So you'll notice on this balanced body, I can just pop that off. It's so cool. And so it becomes like this little seesaw. All right, so you think, well, I can't do this. You should see some of our older students at the studio who can do these exercises. It just takes practice. So I'm trying to feel the balance component here. So my hands, you can see, are kind of wide here. And I'm gonna step one foot back and then the other. Now my goal here is to keep my shoulders over my wrist and to not sag into my hips or into my upper back. In our Pilates Sports Center teacher training, we call this a Japanese bridge where you're sort of doming in your upper back and strong into your core. Holding this, fabulous, right? That's enough. Or you can start to do a little bit of a push-up. For me, that's gonna be pretty small because if I start to wing in my upper back or sag in my low back, so I think I'm gonna stay right here and maybe I'll work one leg at a time. Oh yeah, that's hard. Pull it up because I saw myself sagging. Got a lot of bicep work going on, a lot of pecs. Oh, so much different on one side. Did you know we start losing our balance at age 30? We got a lot of years that we probably haven't practiced this much. You talk about great core work, that's it. Love it. Okay, so I hope that gave you a good bit of work today and we'll do another workout real soon. Thanks so much, bye.